What's up everyone, Dylan here. I wanted to hop on and do another episode of the weekly analysis video. As always, I'll be going over some of the key context to look at going forward, as well as some of the things that have been happening in the market recently. With that said, we'll hop right into it. The last post I put out was June 25th, about two weeks ago, okay? In that video, I talked about some bullish context. I talked about how Nvidia had just fallen 18% and it had tested a key support level at the same exact time that S&P was also bouncing at support. I also talked about how the broader NASDAQ 100 equally weighted index, which is ticker symbol QQQE, stayed very, very resilient despite the, NAS or the NVIDIA dropping as largely as it did, okay? So... To refresh your memory, I'm going to put these drawings uh, back on this blank canvas. Okay, so the S&P, we're going to draw that trend line that I talked about on the last post I made. Right, I talked about how critical this trend line was and how it was previous resistance back in mid-June. Okay, The last time I posted a video was on these tests right here on June 25th right here. Okay, Since I posted that video... The S&P came back down to that same exact trend line two different times on two different days, uh, which is right here, right? This is the visualization, the visual of what I just, you know, described. So that trend line has been a massive component of this this recent rally that we have taken the indices to all time highs. Okay, so that trend line held like a rock in plain English. The bulls were able to defend that uh, very, very clearly. And, and you know, you could argue that, hey, Dylan, you had it drawn differently last time. I'll draw it how I did last time, uh, which I believe was something like this, right? But still, whatever way you draw it, and you'll see it if you look at the last video, the whatever way you draw it, it held in plain English, okay? So not only did the S&P hold that 5,500 to 5,510 area, you go to a daily chart, you could also see that it came right down near the 20-day the moving average, right? Which is uh, a moving average that I tend to, uh, you know, to discuss in these videos, right? It came right down. It didn't hit it perfectly. It, it missed it by a few ticks, but it came right down to that general area on the 20-day moving average and held uh, with that trend line, okay? Also, NVIDIA uh, held the, the line that I told you guys about, that 118.25 or 118.2, and since the video I posted, it has not came back down to that, okay? So despite the S&P uh, making lower lows since the last time I posted, NVIDIA and uh, tech as, as, a, as a sector as a whole, right, looking at the NASDAQ, uh, made a bullish divergence, right? Meaning the S&P was making lower lows, whereas the NASDAQ and NVIDIA were making higher lows, okay? That is another bullish sign, okay? So uh, that's that. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was the VIX and how the VIX actually was the telltale sign that the bulls were going to be able to, uh, you know, de defend dips, okay? And uh, many of you guys watching this know that the VIX is, uh, you know, like my baby. I, I use it very, very often, and I think it's one of the most powerful tools in the market. Okay, so I talked about this in the Discord. This was posted on July 3rd, right, last week. It said, ES Visual, right, still in this flag pattern with bulls in control as the blue support line that I just showed you guys continues to get defended. Been posting that line for weeks. It remains critical going forward. So you could see that same blue line that I just showed you guys on, on my chart, right? Notice how the S&P in this picture, in this screenshot, is moving sideways, okay? Very, very important for this next piece, right? Moving sideways, right? VIX, this is the VIX futures, VIX visual. Uh, VIX has been making all-time lows basically every day. Look at this chart, right? In relation to the S&P chart, chart that I just showed, right, VIX is bleeding lower 
while S&P moving sideways is considered bullish. Each time ES has dipped in the past few weeks, the VIX barely moves higher. What's the result of that? ES downside continuation is short lived and dips get bought. Okay, very, very, very easy, uh, you know, simple yet effective. So notice how the VIX has been in a decline, whereas the S&P at that moment on July 3rd was going sideways. Okay, what was the result, you know, going forward? It was this, right? I'm going to draw this line, right? So then, right, after holding that critical trend line, the S&P broke out. Not only did it break out, but it also held previous resistance as support, not once, but twice. If you even want to call that tail, you could say three times. So not only did they hold that critical trend line, but they also managed to break out above previous resistance and then hold on two different retests at that previous resistance, which then became support, okay? And if the, if the S&P wasn't enough, then NASDAQ did the same exact thing, right? If we use previous all-time highs, right? The breakout occurred higher, and then look where price was supported on the retests, right? So clearly, since the last time I posted the video, two weeks ago, the bulls have shown many, many, many signs that they still remain in control, okay? So another thing that I wanted to show you guys on the VIX to kind of, you know, help be helpful going forward, right? Now, I've kind of been talking about what's been going on in the past. Now, this is going forward, okay? This is very, very important to look at, okay? Since June 21st, we have been in a, a very, very clear and gradual decline in the VIX, okay? Notice, since June 21st, we have not taken out a previous swing high in the VIX, right? I'm gonna go ahead and draw all of these highs, okay? Despite the S&P dipping along this same timeline, the, the VIX never took out a previous high. That tells me that any downside pressure in the S&P 500 futures is going to be short-lived unless the VIX is able to take out a previous high. So all these blue lines that I've just drawn indicate previous swing highs, okay? When I say swing high, I'm just talking about previous highs that were formed before a new low was produced, okay? That is the definition of a previous swing high, okay? None of those have been taken out, okay? Since June 21st, none of those have been taken out. So going forward, if the S&P were to dip, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, right? Doesn't matter. I don't know when it's going to happen. But if and when it does occur where the S&P drops lower, if the VIX does not take out that 13.45, then it's very, very likely that that dip on the S&P 500 futures is going to get bought sooner than later. Fact, okay? Very effective, simple, right? Now, let's say the S&P does drop, right, in the next week, two weeks, I don't know, right? And the VIX does break above that 13.45, right? That will probably be met and coincided with more continuation to the downside on the S&P 500 futures, okay? So the VIX, and this is the futures, this is not VAX, see right here, right? This is VIX, this is what a lot of people use right here, right? Where, 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 right where my cursor is. That is not what I use. The VIX futures are superior in plenty of ways. I do not use the VIX. I want nothing to do with it, put it that way, okay? So VIX futures is what I look at and what I recommend anyone look at, okay? So if the downside pressure in the S&P does occur, you want to look at these previous swing highs. If the VIX can rally up here, 
break above sustained value and, and start to really make a move to the upside, then I would assume that the S&P 500 futures will see some continuation to the downside. But until that happens, I would suspect that every single dip that occurs like we've been seeing is going to be short lived and, and be met with some buying pressure to push it back to the upside. Okay. Very, very simple yet effective. Like I said, so yes, this move higher has been very, very technical, but there also has been some fundamentals to back it up as well. One thing is the chance of a September rate cut. So you could see as of this moment, as of today, it is 70%, right? This is a public website. All you do is type in Fed Watch Tool on Google and it's the first link, okay? So if you go to the September uh, you know, date, which is this tab right here, you'll see that the chances of a hike is 70%. And you could see, okay, this wasn't always 70%. If you go back a month ago, it was less than 50%, right down here. If you guys see that, it was 46.6%, okay? Then a week ago, it was showing 63.4%, and now it's saying 70%. So the, the likelihood of a rate cut in September has been getting increasingly higher, right? The probability that they are going to cut in September has been increasing, okay? And that has been what's helping the S&P with the technicals that I just went over, right? That's been fueling the market higher, okay? So there, there's other reasons as to why they are pricing in a, a large, you know, a larger chance of a, um, a Fed uh, cut in, or rate cut in September as well. There's four reasons, right? You have rising unemployment rate, right? The US unemployment rate moved up to 4.1% in June, which is the highest level since November of 2021. You have slowing jobs growth, right? Total jobs in the US increased 1.7% over the last year, which was the lowest year over year growth rate since March of 2021. You also have slowing wage growth, US average hourly earnings increased 3.9% over the last year, which is the slowest growth rate since May of 2021. And then you also have cooling inflation, which is uh, the Fed, uh, or I should say, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation is the core PCE, which has moved down to 2.6% in May, which is also the lowest since March of 2021. Okay, so yes, you have technicals, but you also have some fundamentals that is driving price higher as well. And those stats were from Charlie Bellello on Twitter. Okay, I literally just took what he said and read them out to you guys. Okay, so uh, that's very, very important, right? It, now, if this number goes back down to say sub 50%, that should be met with some selling pressure on the S&P 500, which then should make the VIX futures uh, break some of those previous swing highs, okay? So all of this stuff is connected in one way or another, but I just wanted to show you guys that yes, it has been technical, but there also have been some fundamentals moving price higher as well. Okay, um, so one thing in terms of um, being bearish, um, and, and this has a caveat to it, I, I will explain, right? This daily time frame on the NASDAQ, um, you could see that price has gone higher from, say, June 20th or June 18th, right? Since then, on the RSI, since the June 18th peak, it has gone lower on the RSI, right? Technically, this is a bearish divergence. The caveat with this information is those bearish divergences work well if you pair it with a resistance level, okay? Since the NASDAQ is at all-time highs, there's no historical level to pair that RSI with, okay? And that's why I don't want to say it's impossible to use, but it's, it's, it's not as effective because you're not pairing it with a resistance level okay so yes that is technically bearish uh, but considering the s p and the nasdaq are you know at or near all-time highs it's not as uh, good as quality okay um 
Uh, another slightly bearish thing for the time being is the uh, NASDAQ 100 equal weighted index shares, right? I showed you guys this last week, but you could see um, we came right up to the previous all time highs back in November of 2021, right? It tested there, broke above for like a, a little bit, right? Kind of peaked its head above and then failed there. So, um, the fact that it's failing at resistance back from 2021, right? And, and this is, like I said, this is as if the NASDAQ 100 were all equally weighted, right? Um, rather than say Microsoft, Apple, and Nvidia being more of the weighting. Okay. So technically this isn't too bullish, right? But it, it could change, right? Tomorrow it could freaking break to all time highs and, and continue to the upside. So going forward, if you are a bull, you want to see that QQQE can break back above 90.2 and, and, and push value higher. That would be the best case scenario if you're a bull, okay? Same deal with the RSP. RSP is the equally weighted SPY, right? S&P 500. This thing has been going sideways despite the S&P and the NASDAQ breaking to new highs. So if you are a bull, you wanna see that same thing. You wanna see this start to move to the upside and, and hopefully break out above that blue line. Okay, so those are some things to look out for. Going forward on the indices, right? Um, I would say, to look at that 5620 area, okay? And, and 5620 uh, was the previous critical trend line that we were uh, respecting at one point. I'm gonna draw it, right? This marked the last couple highs, if you recall, right? We marked, this marked the high from uh, July of uh, 27th of 2023. It marked the high in March 21st, or yeah, March 21st, 2024. And then again, it marked another high in, in uh, late June of, of last month, okay? Now, when price got up there, right? Price got up here on Friday, I genuinely expected a further pullback. Not Nothing crazy, but I expected price to at least come down to retest this level once again, this, this 55.85 which would have been, what, call it 0.78% or 0.7% point, point uh, pullback, uh, if not a little bit more than that, right, to, to say retest maybe this level here, right? Uh, so I was expecting a pullback. I didn't put money behind it because there, there weren't too many um, pieces of context, plus it got up there uh, late on Friday and I didn't want to swing trade a short over the weekend, right? There were just numerous things that were going against the fact that I, you know, wanted to put money behind that for short. So I never did. Um, but I did expect that to produce a further pullback, um, you know, for the short, short term. So going forward, the S&P has been uh, able to kind of defend dips near this trend line, okay? Um, I would use 56 uh, 20 as some cushion, right? Because nothing's perfect, right? I, I said that in the Discord, uh, I think yesterday, right? 5620 uh, gives it some cushion. Um, so as long as price stays above 5620, uh, it's, it's very tough to short. Now, if price were to pull back below there, let's just say below uh, Monday's lows, um, you might get some 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 pressure, some selling pressure to the downside, which the next level would be that 55.85 um, test, okay? Um, so this week is pretty busy in terms of um, catalysts. We have CPI and PPI Thursday, Friday. We also have Powell. Uh, day two of his testimony is tomorrow, so there could be some volatility. Um, and if there is, like I said, I would look at this 5617-ish area, below that 5585, and then if it really gets going to the downside, that previous critical trend line is very, very important, as well as the 20-day moving average on the S&P and the NASDAQ futures. So that's it for me. Um, last week I didn't post because it was a shortened holiday week and I was pretty busy, but going forward, expect more videos from me on a weekly basis. Peace.